Welcome to today's live stream. We're going to talk about foods and your health. And those of you who uh, don't know me, I am Dr. Ray Wisniewski. I am your um, host for today. And by the way, we do these programs every single week. I hope everybody uh, catches us on our Saturday um, morning show as well. At We uh, live stream on Nutrimos USA on Facebook. So go to facebook.com, then uh, search Nutrimos USA, and then you can uh, find us there. And so we, uh, we really look uh, forward to um, some great information. We're going to talk about one of the things that makes Nutrimos so unique, so different, is that we take such a, a, a look at food. You know, when we talk about Hippocrates, says, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. Well, how, do you, how does that occur? How do you make that happen? Well, today, we're actually going to talk about that. That's going to be um, one of the things on today's uh, broadcast, that w how, how we do do this. And as I said, you know, we always bring the most significant research and news to you every single week. And you can hear us every Thursday at 12 noon on Facebook at Nutrimost USA. Or again, you can uh, visit us, um, you can visit us, on our uh, each Saturday morning on the same um, broadcast. So what I want to do today is really just try to um, get, I'm going to bring up, let me see if I can um, bring it up on, hold on a second here. And before I do that, let me just um, just put uh, here to remind everybody where we're at is um, every uh, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and every Thursday at 12 noon. And those are all Eastern time. And by the way, you can just go to the um, Nutrimos USA page. Like that page. When you like it, you'll get um, messages telling you, you know, when we are live streaming. Uh, you can go to NutrimosReviews.com, get some information from there. But on today's show, what we're going to talk about, like I said, we're going to talk about um, foods. And what I'd like to do is just bring up, let me just see if I can bring up our computer and show you some of the stuff that's in the news that I wanted to um, relay today because it's... Um, just some really good things. Let me just uh, see. This is one. And you can see this is from uh, Medical News Today. Was, uh, and this was published this uh, past year. But I, I want to put some different things together because this is about there's a, a, a polyamine uh, that was first isolated in semen, and it's called spermidine. And it says spermidine-rich foods. And it's been shown that it can prevent uh, liver cancer. It can extend the lifespan. And in fact, you know, one of the reasons why I talk about this is that what they found out is this, this compound. And when we talk about this compound, spermidine, it's, it's been shown that, um, that people who have it, 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 that eat more foods with it, can actually live longer. They can overcome certain conditions. They're li less likely to have fibrosis of the liver. They're less likely to have um, cancerous liver tumors. And see, the thing about this is when you take a look at how do you live longer and to, to live longer, there's only been a couple, there's only been a few different ways that they show that you can actually dramatically increase your life expectancy. And we, not, we know that one of those is when you severely cut your calories and you have these people that are almost starving themselves on a day to day basis uh, in an attempt to live longer. There's also restricting methionine, which is a which is a type of amino acid that's found in certain um, certain meats, uh, certain proteins, and there's there's a drug that um, targets and uh, when you hear rapamycin. In fact, you'll hear me talk a lot about mTOR, which is and they they've changed the, the name of it over the years. They keep it um, mammalian target of rapamycin, and the reason is that they're looking at that there are certain things that you can affect the biochemistry with this, but there's foods that also affect it. Well, one of the things that they found is that this compound, spermidine, and spermidine, like I said, is a polyamine. It was first isolated in semen, but it's in um, different foods. And um, particularly, as it said, let's go back to, um, uh, that. let's see here. As it says on here, it says, uh, that these um, aged cheeses, but it's not just aged cheeses. Um, it's found in a lot of other foods that are rich in that. It's found in a lot of different um, mushrooms, which is um, big. Um, there's some legumes. Uh, there's whole grains uh, that it's found in. And it's interesting, and I 
this is a, a sort of a, um, a side note that, you know, there's some diets in, um, that talk about to, to not to eat these legumes because of these anti-nutrients, uh, lectins that are within that. However, if you go to look at areas where people live the longest, what you find out is that in those regions that they eat the most legumes. And it turns out that there is this um, compound, which is a spermidine that's found in these that may be, just may be somewhat responsible. And what they found out though is that if you, um, and they said if you start eating this you know, early in life, that it can have just a huge difference. I'm talking about increasing your life expectancy by as much as 25%. Now, if you start later in life, it still has an effect, they're estimated about 10%. And what it does, one of the reasons why it does this is that it helps with autophagy. And that's how the body, um, it may, which means self-eating. So it takes out bad cells and, um, and, and helps with uh, uh, regeneration of good, healthy cells. But there's more than that. Let's take a look. There's a, if we go back to, um, I have these uh, listed on here on my, let's go into this. This is here, consumption of spicy foods and, um, and total and cause-specific mortality population-based cohort study. What this is, is they basically found out that if you eat um, spicy foods on a regular basis, that you lower your risk of early death. And when they looked at this and they, they looked at what the differences were, it was pretty amazing. I mean, people who ate spicy foods um, regularly uh, were at like 14% less risk of, of death and, than people who did not. And when you add that all together, you know, you have this 14% lower risk of death compared to people who only ate um, spicy food once a week. And you can see that... Um, uh, the result, as it says here, that there is an inverse association between, right at the bottom here, uh, between spicy food consumption and total mortality was stronger in those who did not consume alcohol than those who did, because there are some interactions. Inverse associations were also observed for death due to cancer, ischemic heart disease, and respiratory disease. Um, the conclusion is, in this large study, Habitual consumption of spicy foods was inversely associated with total and certain cause-specific mortality independent of other risk factors of death. So what they showed was that it actually lowered the, death, um, the risk of death from cancer. It lowered from ischemic heart disease, from respiratory disease. They did find that it was even more so in women than it was in men. And they showed that, it, uh, that um, chili peppers were some of the most commonly used um, spices that were associated with this and it was foods that were rich in capsaicin which by the way you know one of the things is we have our one um, product uh, Circumost and you know that's one of the reasons why it has a um, that we use it for it has a high amount of these um, there's cayenne pepper but there's a lot of other things in it see here's the thing when we look at foods, and that's what you have to do, you have to, when we say, let your foods be your medicine and your medicine be your food, that's what we do. We take a look at this biological profile to determine what are the foods that are going to be best for you. So let's just, um, as we go back to this, I have um, a couple other, this one here. And this is a this is an um, an interesting um, fa um, one as well because what this is, and you may not understand exactly um, what this about is about, but it talks about the fact that these that there are results suggest that there may be an autophagy related switch during the evolution of these proteins and metazoans, and this is a this is a um, a pretty big thing. And what this is about is really about the fact that there is a, a uh, natural compounds that are in fruits and in vegetables. And when we talk about these natural compounds there in these, you know, we're talking about things, uh, things that are like um, grapes, pears. But it's, it's also in foods like mushrooms. It's also in foods like lentils. It's in green peas. It's in, um, you know, red grapes. It's in um, pomegranates. And what we find out is there is a molecular mechanism 
And they talk about this molecular mechanism within this that really shows that colon cancer can be prevented. When we take a look at colon cancer, we take a look at um, Crohn's disease. And you have a, a, a it really, it's, there's a, they went through what the um, molecular reason is that these foods that we now know that affect these types of the, these um, conditions. So one of the things that we do, and that's what we've, you know, it's, it's a been a multi-million dollar project for me to create uh, Nutrimost Intelligence, is we want to try to get this as we get more information and we document that information and we say, let's, let's insert that to let the help the computer help tell us what is the best foods to eat. And, you know, and sometimes it's really um, simple and sometimes it's not because with one thing, um, with one condition, it may be a food that will help that. In another condition, it's, it's not, um, not quite as much. So if we go here and let's take a look if we have, um, this is a dietary um, antioxidant capacity, risk of type 2 diabetes, large pers um, prospective uh, study. And this was this, um, they call it the, uh, the EPIC cohort study. And one of the things that this is um, about, when we talk about this, the, the, the fact that when you have foods that are rich in um, these various antioxidants, and we know things like um, chocolate, we know blueberries, we know teas, um, some of the other fr uh, fruits, the strawberries. But what they did, what was nice about this study that's a little bit different than some of the other studies, that they looked at each of these antioxidants a little bit um, differently. They looked at them individually. So a lot of times you take the, the total um, potential of the antioxidant as a food. And you see what that food does. And what they did here instead is they broke that up and they said, of those, and then what they try to do is say, of this, these foods that we know are able to um, lower our risk of type 2 diabetes, which foods, like what is it in the foods? Is it the lycopene? Is it the um, vitamin C? Is it, you know, um, these, the, the B vitamins? Is it E? Is it, you know, what is it? that actually lowers the risk. And so what they've come up with, and they, um, they came up with these, these antioxidant scores, and they found out that the people who had the highest scores had a 27% risk, taking out all the factors, including the biggest factor, which is um, BMI. And really, BMI, the reason it's such a big factor isn't because it's uh, the BMI itself. The reason it's the biggest factor is that if you have a higher BMI, that means that your body is more um, your cellular communications are more broken. It means that your biochemistry is more broken. It means that those, those hormones, those neurotransmitters, aren't responding the same. It might mean that there's um, insulin resistance. Uh, there may be leptin resistance. And you have to ask, which is the cause and which is the effect? And that's one of the things that we're always looking at. But one of the things, if you want to balance the body, we have to say, okay, how do we put this together so that when we're looking at um, when we're looking at something like this, for instance, you know, when we're looking at okay, these dietary antioxidant capacity and risk for type two diabetes. And by the way, these are all you can see. These are um, this was in uh, diabetology, uh, um, which is a um, peer-reviewed uh, study. And let me just see here. If we go down, there's results, conclusions, or finally suggest that the total antioxidant capacity may play an important role in reducing the risk of type 2 diabetes in middle-aged women. Um, that's because they did it on women is uh, what it was. And so we know that different foods have a different effect. And when we see this, and you know that there is a, you know, whether it be, and we see this, for instance, with uh, like red wine was rated very, very high on this. Yet you'll see some people, you know, they'll talk about the fact that um, that maybe that you shouldn't drink red wine or you should. And you have to know, sometimes you shouldn't, sometimes you, you should. See, there isn't a one-size-fits-all. Okay, well, maybe I should have taken that off of there. But um, one of the things is, when we take a look at all of these factors, and, that's a, and that is a, these are all factors. 
Um, but the one thing, let me just show you this here. We're going to bring up something. This is, I um, always like plus one. This is a, a journal here. Let me just, if I can get this up. And this is, which foods may be addictive? The rule of processing fat content and glycemic load. And one of the things that they found out was this, is they're looking at what are the foods, and this was through uh, the University of Michigan, and they found out that there are certain foods that are more highly addictive. You know, we already talked about that there's biochemical companies that you send your food to, and they look at it and they decide what additives that you place in, put into the food to make it more addictive. So we know, you know, you're up against a, a battle with this. And the more that once you get leptin sensitivity, once you get insulin sensitivity, one of the things you want to do is you want to prevent that from coming back again. And when you want to get, you want to return your normal cellular communication. And that's what it's about, cell communication. Any chronic disease, there is a, either a, a cellular communication breakdown, either intracellularly or extracellularly. If it's, if it's either inside the cells or it's between the different, different cells and between the different organs and tissues. And we're going to talk about more of this uh, in the coming days. We're going to talk about how fat is an endocrine organ. We'll talk about how uh, the, the chemistry of that. Um, we're going to talk about some of these things. But today I just wanted to talk about that you know, we look at food as being, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. There is a, um, there is a wave that's against you. And we take a look, the more refined foods that you have, you know, we know that the more that you eat things like, like pizza, very addicting. And you take, and some people say, what's well, not, when you take a look, you'll see a lot of the uh, nutritionists say, you know, there's some natural things in there. There's, but when you, typically when you buy a pizza, they use Cheap oils, cheap cheeses that are um, not good. You know, by the way, on that first one I talked about, did you see it said aged cheese? The cheese should be aged at least, at least, at least 90 days. Just to give you an example, it just made me think of that as I was going into and I said pizza. But the same way with uh, things like French fries, the same way with anything with white flour, with um, refined sugars. These, and that's what this study shows here, which foods are addictive, um, and it says it, it seems to be that those have a high glycemic load are um, addicting as well. And, and it really because is you stimulate more of these sugar receptors. And fructose is really big with this. And, and that's one of the reasons why we know that fructose is so big when we deal with, um, for instance, the liver. So I just want to um, remind everybody about the, um, what we do, how we do it, why we're here. Uh, we're here for you, and we're here to really just make, um, you know, to, to empower your life so that you have the tools, and, and we make it easy for you. And when I say that, I see my, my water's been in the picture this whole time. When I, when I, see, I say that, the reason I, I, I say that it's because if you're empowered with knowing what it is that you should eat, knowing what it is that you should avoid, and it's different for each person. We see that. You know, there's certain things that are, that are going to be just better overall. Um, there's certain things that if high antioxidant, uh, that's going to be better overall. And, but it's when you realize, when you know that there are certain, which fruits are going to be better for, for your particular body and which are going to be worse. Now, of course, all the fruits are going to be better than eating um, a Twinkie. You know, it's just, it's just the way that it is. You know, you'll hear some people say uh, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie, and it really doesn't matter. That's just ridiculous. That's ridiculous. But you have to understand. And so we're here to um, bring that information to you. And the nice thing is that this has been a, just an, an enormous project for me to put this together so that you can have an analysis. And, you know, we do the best. Uh, we do a root, root cause analysis based on, a, all the clues that the body gives. The body gives clues. And those clues tell us then which are the foods that your body should respond best to. And, which that it, and it gives us an advantage. It gives us a better opportunity. You know, and it's, and that, that can change over time. And it's, but the reality of it is you have to have a starting point. 
And you're going to do a lot better if you have this roadmap and you have this understanding that, hey, um, what are the foods, if I have these challenges, what foods are going to help me? And, and actually more important is which foods should I avoid? Because the avoidance is probably more important than the, um, than even the, the, the eating the right foods. Because if you're eating right foods, but then you're, but you're also putting the ones that are going to cause damage, it's not going to be good. It, it really is, and it's still, you're not helping yourself. And that's one of the reasons why you really have to watch, stay away from the foods that are bad, eat the foods that are good. But I want you to hope that you join us every Thursday at 12 noon. You can always get these um, afterwards at, on uh, Facebook, Nutrimos USA, and tell your friends about this. We, we just want to get this information out just to help more and more people. And again, I hope you join us on Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. It's a little bit of a different show. And um, where we talk about all kinds of things, this is more just on just the research that has uh, um, occurred. So again, every Thursday, we're always bringing the most significant research and news to just help you live your most beautiful, healthy life. Thank you for joining us.